Good morning. Welcome to the Hompahonganji Mission of Hawaii State Ministers Association online Sunday service. We're grateful that you have uh, joined together with us here today uh, as we reflect on our lives and express appreciation for the wonderful life that we are always receiving, the help we are always receiving from others. We have a few things to reflect on today that I think are very important during this time of coronavirus and also terrible upheaval uh, in this country and in the world. Uh, things that we, uh, we really need to think about, I think. So let's, uh, we'll get started right away. We begin our service with the Vandana and Tisarana, and then we will have the chanting of the Sutra, Ju Sege. Following, that, following the Sutra, I will share a Dharma message with you, and then we will recite the Golden Chain of Love. Uh, hopefully, uh, you will recite it with me so we can recite together. And following that, we will have the, the Gatha Ondoksan uh, that I will sing for you, and then we will conclude with the singing of the Nembutsu. So thank you very much for being here and for taking this time uh, to uh, reflect and to think about important things during, uh, in your life and in, in the life that we all share. Thank you very much. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo. Shigum 
Good morning. I'd like to share some thoughts about the Dharma with you at this very difficult time that we're living through. Let's begin by putting our hands in Gasho and reciting the Nambutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Namo Amida So right now we are experiencing a lot of upheaval in our country and around the world. So first of all, we've had the COVID-19 this situation which uh, isn't over yet. Some of the, the experts are saying that we'll probably have a second wave, and so we uh, really, that's an uncertainty. Um, then on top of being in the midst of this pandemic, uh, some really uh, terrible occurrence of uh, the really cruel and inexcusable killing of an unarmed black man by police officers in Minneapolis has uh, prompted huge nationwide protests and expressions of anger and calls for the justice and equality that have always been denied black people. It was on May 25th that this one individual, a man named George Floyd, had his life taken from him through an act really of casual and cynical brutality by three policemen who were supposed to be, who are supposed to be, protectors of the people, not judges and executioners. Normally, these all too frequent occurrences cause 
waves of anger and resentment from black people and other minorities, you know, so, sometimes locally, sometimes throughout the country. But this time, something unexpected has happened. Maybe it was because of the accumulated frustration and anger brought about by the pandemic and, and the lack of resources available to help the very communities who uh, uh, most of offer, often suffer persecution and are uh, most in need. Whatever the reason though, mass protests, protests have quickly erupted throughout the country. Significantly though, it's this time it's not just people of color uh, protesting in the streets, but people of all ethnicities are out there right now demanding justice and fairness. Large numbers of people have begun to realize that injustice that affects one person, one group, are, is an injustice that affects and defiles all of us. Many of us in this country are finally beginning to realize that all brutality, all injustice, all violence, even if aimed at others, is also aimed at me. Even if I am safe in my life, or feel safe in my life, in my community, from oppression and inequality, I think we are beginning to understand that the suffering of others is my suffering too. As a Buddhist, I feel that the spirit of the Bodhisattva vow, the aspiration for the well-being and peace of all people, uh, is manifesting itself now through the events we are seeing. I cannot and should not accept peace and well-being just for myself when I know that others are having their basic rights denied them because of their color or economic status. I cannot and should not take for granted that I am treated with dignity and respect while others, meanwhile, are daily humiliated uh, and brutalized and must live in fear. So you who are listening to me right now, uh, you would no doubt describe yourselves as Buddhists. We all describe ourselves as Buddhists, right? What do you think it means to be a Buddhist? Unfortunately, the radical message, the strong message of Buddhism is not always clear to us, not always clear to, to people who practice Buddhism, who live a Buddhist life. Even those who come to temple every week, back when we could come to temple every week, it's easy to misunderstand Buddhism when your life is relatively easy and safe. And your problems are mainly the ordinary problems that people have. Maintaining health, you know, supporting your family, growing old, grieving for lost loved ones, and so on. We all experience in this life the sadness of impermanence. These are the difficulties that everyone, everywhere faces. And when our life is not too exposed to destitution, poverty, oppression, we, are, we, uh, we might think that Buddhism or any faith is simply there to comfort us in difficult times, you know, to reaffirm that warm feeling of acceptance, continuity, connection with past generations, and give us a, a confidence in the future, for the future, you know? Of course, those are good things, and there's nothing wrong with Buddhism and Buddhist temples providing those things. Uh, but they are not unique to Buddhism. Every authentic religion in the world uh, provides that comfort and support. We all need that. But that's not the message of Buddhism. Sadly, many people think that Buddhism is only for times when someone dies. And so they do not always hear and understand the message of Buddhism, the call of the Buddha. You see, when the message, you see, the message of Buddhism is not always comfortable. It's challenging. Buddhism is fundamentally a call to us to wake up, wake up to ourselves, to become deeply aware of our selfish, deluded minds, to repent of our shameful cruelty toward others, and to find our true self in oneness with others, in oneness with all beings. So it means to let go of our, of our sense of being right all the time. It means to let go of our sense of superiority uh, over others. When, when Shakyamuni Buddha, the historical Buddha, began to teach the Dharma after his enlightenment, 
he created a, a Dharma community called the Sangha uh, of people who were seeking to become awake, to wake up from their deluded and selfish minds. So what kind of community did uh, the Buddha create? Do you think it was in a community that was a mirror or an or a, a imitation of the, of the, the secular world uh, at that time with, with its arbitrary use of power and authority? Do you think in the Sangha every individual's condition, in the, in condition was determined by their social status or their wealth or their class or their gender? On the contrary, the original Buddhist Sangha was a community of total equality designed to make it possible for those who joined it to follow deeply the path of awakening without being misdirected by society's values which put some people on top and others, most others, on the bottom, which justified poverty, the mistreatment of women, the caste system, and the unfair distribution of resources. There's nothing new in this world. We still have the same problems today. In the Sangha, in the Buddha's Sangha, everyone had what they needed to walk the path that day, each day. And by its very existence, the Sangha was a rebuke. It was a rebuke to the status quo of society. It was a critique of a system, of any system, built on inequality in which the majority of people were kept in poverty while the fruit of their hard work was enjoyed by the few who owned the land. The values of the Sangha and the happiness and joy of the monks clearly showed the emptiness of, of civilization or society's values, even though the monks were living a life of total homelessness and possessionlessness. We would say, oh, that's awful, that's, 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 that's such poverty, right? But they, they, unlike everyone else in society who was plagued by anxiety and worry and, and stress and violence, the monks were able to realize the true happiness that comes from renouncing power and privilege, wealth and status, popularity and approval. N not that it doesn't come from seeking and possession, possessing those things. So later, of course, this ideal, the ideal of the Sangha became diluted and, and and uh, the Buddhist community absorbed and incorporated many of the assumptions of inequality, for example, regarding women, that its members brought with them from, from the society. And as monks moved from a homeless life in the forest to life in the large and beautiful temples full of priceless art and treasures, and as they became more and more dependent on donations from rich and powerful patrons, the original message uh, was maybe forgotten by many. Nevertheless, there are many examples of, Buddhist, of Buddhists throughout history courageously standing up to criticize the injustices of the rulers of their time. Shinran Shonin himself was a good example. He was, in, in his writing, Kyogyo Shinsho, uh, at the end, he is very highly uh, critical of the leaders of uh, of, the, the, of the country of, of his day for their unjust policies which are against the Dharma as well as uh, the defilement of, of, the, of the path, of the Buddhist path by the corrupt and hypocritical monks of that time. Today we live in a society where people are very much divided. Rich and poor, black and white, man and woman, right, left, every shade in between. It seems like everybody has been at each other's throats for, for, for ages. How can unity and peace be restored? Don't you think that we Buddhists ought to have a role in helping to heal and promote true peace in society? Watching the many videos of the demonstrations and protests on the news channels and the uh, internet, we have all seen rioting and looting and, and violence. But um, it's very clear that much of the violence is not perpetrated by the po protesters, but rather by law enforcement agents who continue to meet peaceful, unarmed demonstrators uh, who are simply carrying out their constitutional right to assemble 
and to protest with military force, with tear gas, with rubber bullets. It is a shameful and sickening thing for any ordinary human being to watch. Of course, the situation is complicated. There, have been a lot, there has been a lot of looting. For example, um, uh, which, is, which is not a, an admirable thing, but some of the people doing this are simply hungry people, people who are suffering the economic impact of the pandemic. And some are just taking advantage, of course. Um, that always happens. We're foolish beings. There are many, I hope, good, just, and honest police personnel who really want to protect the rights of citizens. But unfortunately, we see many examples of profoundly disturbing violence against peaceful protesters. Some people are, are trying to pro portray this situation as hordes of violent rioters who need to be controlled by the government. That's just an excuse for more violence. That's an old lie. I hope we can see through this, through that. What do we actually see? It, we see we, it, when we look at those videos, uh, we look at what's going on, we see many dedicated and courageous people demonstrating for the rights of others, putting their lives on the line to help rebuild and heal this country from centuries of the evil of slavery that has never been fully eradicated. And we have seen other remarkable things. In one video, you might have seen this too. Policemen were kneeling with protesters, showing their sympathy and solidarity. In another video, I saw protesters protecting a lone police officer who had become separated from the other police. They were protecting him from other angry protesters. You also may have seen the video of, of one lone, courageous uh, woman who was stopping uh, you know, stubbornly stopping some big men from looting a store. Those are isolated incidents, but encouraging and inspiring nevertheless. And these incidents remind us that despite the complexity of this, this situation, we should not let our fears and fantasies about the protest and protesters distract us from the fairness of all oppressed people's right to demand justice. And as Buddhists, we have a role and a duty to stand up for the oppressed in society, to teach nonviolence, and to insist that everyone, including law enforcement and government, uphold and respect the dignity and humanity of every single person without exception. Some of us today, some people, still don't understand the anger of black people and other minorities, minorities in this country. Despite all the evidence, many people continue to believe that anyone who is poor or disadvantaged or of another race uh, is uh, just lazy. They're, it's not because they're, they're oppressed or that they're disadvantaged, it's just because they're lazy. The Buddha taught that this kind of thinking is the discriminating mind. We judge people. We put labels on them, on uh, people and things, in order to make ourselves feel more comfortable. It's not my problem, they're just lazy. They could do better if they wanted to. That's what we say. In the, in, and that's in the case of racism, this instinct of the oppressor to blame their victims for the disadvantages which the, we, the oppressor, <laughs> the oppressor has uh, imposed on them is the saddest and most destructive destructive form of discrimination. As Buddhists, we must understand this. How can anyone ever know what another person has gone through in their life, how hard they have worked and struggled, and what they have suffered? That is why Amida Buddha always says to us, just as you are, just as you are. There's no alternative. We either judge or we accept each other uh, as full human beings. Back in the early days of the civil rights movement, when some white people wondered, why are black people so angry? Martin Luther King responded in one of his letters to this kind of thinking. He wrote, when you have seen hate-filled policemen curse, kick, brutalize, and even kill your black brothers and sisters with impunity, then you will understand why we find it difficult to wait. 
So maybe we can begin to understand this now. I have a feeling and a hope that a majority of people in this country are now beginning to understand and that they will not go back to the complacent lives we lived before again, but instead will continue to work hard for the well-being of all people, of all beings. So as we see the changes coming to our country and to the world, it is so important to remember this true message of Buddhism. May our Buddhist faith, our Shinjin, our oneness with Amida, boundless compassion that embraces all things, all beings, the oneness of life, open us to experience true sympathy, kindness, and understanding for others. Let us live our life with the realization that everyone, everything we have is a gift for which we should be deeply grateful and through which you and I can share our good fortune with one another. Let us realize that the suffering of every oppressed person is my suffering and then ask myself, how am I going to open my heart to look out and care for those who are in true need? How long will I, through my passive acquiescence, my, my votes, lack of votes, my wallet, etc., how long will I continue to give permission to the powerful of this world to take control and to refuse to share the rightful sustenance of life with everyone? So thank you very much for listening to me today. Um, let us try to live the teachings of Buddhism deeply. I hope you will, put, you will reflect on these things. So let us now conclude our, our reflections by putting our hands together in Gasho and reciting the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo. I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Namo Amida Namo
Thank you very much for joining with us today for this State Ministers Association online Sunday service. Uh, it's wonderful that we're able to have this opportunity to gather together uh, through technology and uh, to be able to um, hear the Dharma and uh, express our appreciation for the, for the, the wonderful uh, benevolence that we are always receiving. Uh, and to reflect deeply, to think deeply about ourselves, who we are, and how uh, we uh, uh, affect others in the world. That's a very important part of our Buddhist life. So, uh, at this time, uh, we uh, come to the end of the service. I'd like to thank you all very much for uh, your, your wonderful support for all of our Hapanganji temples. Thank you very much for that. Next week, uh, the, the um, online service will be uh, officiated uh, uh, by Reverend Shinkai Murakami of Wailuku Honganji, and he, of course he will be the deliverer of Dharma message. And uh, uh, so please take care of yourselves and uh, uh, um, be healthy at this difficult time. Um, in conclusion, I would like to recite the words, the, a short part of the words of the Metta or loving kindness meditation. Uh, this is a most ancient of, of Buddhist. Uh, uh, recitations and uh, it is our it is a way of wishing se sending that thought that uh, uh, aspiration uh, to all beings uh, for their happiness and wellness and uh, so uh, I will recite those words as we conclude the service may all beings be happy and well may no harm or difficulties come to them may they live in peace and harmony namo amida butsu namo amida. Namor.